Thanks for joining me, Terry, with another self-improvement tip for you. Networking 101, the basics. What's that sound? I think I heard your heart stop. But believe me, it's a life skill, a soft skill you cannot be without. Despite the internet and all those apps, there will never be an app for that. Networking can be fun, whether you want to find a job, keep a job, launch your business off the ground, expand your business, or just build confidence and become a better social animal. Networking 101 is fun to do. And here's a series of tips I'd like to share with you. And if all through this you miss something, don't worry. You can read all about it down below in my blog. Okay, let's get going with number one. Know what you do. Almost inevitably, the moment you meet somebody at a networking or a social event, a conference, a workshop, a seminar, they will ask you, Terry, what do you do? Now's not the time to boil the ocean. Develop a short, sweet, succinct one-liner. Ideally, a phrase, something that invokes their curiosity so that they ask you to elaborate. That's when you can start expanding on it. It could be a tagline. You could say, for example, well, I like helping people develop their skills by showing them how I've used skills and, and how I've learned to use them so that they can save time and not take all the time that I used to take. Number two, know your why. Understand fully why you do what you do, and this will drive you to deliver a better product or service in your business. Your why, why do you do it? Oh, don't ever say it's the money. The money is a byproduct. The real reason you do it is because it gives you, for example, maybe a satisfaction of helping people out, a satisfaction of knowing that you've sold somebody a product or service that can help them expand and become better at what they do. Know your why. Number three, have a business card. If you're not in business, don't fret. It's called a contact card. I still go to conferences and workshops and I can't believe when I see a good conversation going between two people and then they can't find a pen. They can't find a paper. And that just breaks the whole networking event. So always have a business card on you. It saves so much time. In my early days, I used to do the same thing, make up excuses that, oh, I'm getting them printed. Most of the time, people don't even have one. Number four, have a website. Nowadays, things with the internet go 24-7, 365, round the clock. A website could be as simple as a one page. It shows your name, what you do, your tagline, your why, and your contact information. Remember, with the internet, it's a 24-7, 365. So a website shows that you're on the ball and you're networking with people all around the globe, depending what your product or service may be. Number five, close behind, have an email address. You want to make it very easy for people to contact you, to follow up, to get further information from you. And if you have a website, an email uses the same domain address as your website. Have an email. Number six, have a social media footprint. You don't have to be on all social media. Pick one or two that work the best for you, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Connect it with your website. With a social media footprint, you can actually communicate out to your prospective audience through the internet. A social media footprint tells that you're with it, you're on the ball, and you're ready to do business with most anyone. Number seven, for a product or service that you deliver, know your charge rate. Once you get conversing with people, they'll want to know whether or not they're in a ballpark of your price range, whether they can afford you. So have a rough idea on a price that you would charge them, either a flat rate or an ongoing. Also, I recommend having a 20 or 30 minute free consultation with them that you can do to give them an estimate. This is your chance to prove that you're a professional, you know your business, you have to educate them in case they think your rate is high. So you have to educate them a little bit to tell them what all the background work is that you do in order to justify your charge rate. Number eight, this one I used just a few weeks ago, meet in person. That proves that you're a real life person and that you're serious about doing a business with the people you meet, selling your product or service. When I met somebody, it was only for 10 minutes, but it sealed the deal. It shows that you can keep an appointment. It shows that you're a living person. It shows you're committed to delivering what you say you do. Number nine, don't talk too much when you first meet people. 
Now, remember, when you first meet somebody, you want to have a conversation going, a dialogue between the two of you. You don't want to be running the whole conversation and walking over top of them. I probably did a lot of this in my early days. Sometimes when I watch people doing this, being a bystander, it sort of gives me the impression that they're kind of lacking confidence, that they're overselling themselves. And people that are good at networking will pick up on that very, very fast. And you want to be able to allow them to interject, to interrupt you. Because remember, our thoughts come through our head very quickly. And if we miss that opportunity to ask exactly something that tweaked their interest to what you said, that thought can be gone forever. You want to get them to, to talk and interact with you. So whatever you do, don't talk too much. Dress business casual. Don't go to a networking event or a workshop or seminar, even if you're just dropping in to see who's there or what the venue is like. Don't wear the hacky shorts that you go and wash your car with. Dress business casual to show that you're at least professional. Remember, you can always overdress, but there's no forgiving if you underdress. Number 11, mind your time. Time is our most precious commodity. Once it's gone, it's gone. You can't get it back. If you join some group or association for networking or something that teaches you how to expand your salesmanship or learning how to speak better and present yourself, always review every couple of months whether you're getting out more than what you're putting in. There will come a point where you hit the law of diminishing returns and for all the input you put in, mainly your time, you may not be getting any more out of it and growing, so then it means it's time to move on. Number 12, stick with doers. You want to hang around with people that can influence you, that provide the positive environment for you to grow and develop, that inspire you. For heaven's sakes, don't waste too much time hanging around with people just going for coffee. Hang around with people that do things that can pull you along, if anything, give you the initiative. You can also learn from them a lot, maybe even ask them to be a, a mentor to you. Number 13, mind your priorities. This happened to me just a few weeks ago. I had a coffee lined up with a very good friend, and two days before, I got a last minute call to come and do a video of somebody that was speaking. Obviously, I had to drop the coffee, stand my priorities, and take the videography opportunity. Remember, these opportunities come but once. And if you say no to an opportunity like that, the very first one, believe me, there's a very good chance you may not get a second chance. So always mind your priorities. Grab the stuff that comes up on your way last minute without any warning or forewarning and take it. It may be an opportunity that will allow you to grow. Number 14, keep your commitments. This one I blew a couple of years ago. If you meet somebody at a networking event and they ask you for a quote and you say, yeah, sure, I'll send you a quote right that evening as soon as I get home, do it. It may be three in the morning, but that doesn't matter. Send it in because it shows that you're committed, that you say what you do and do what you say, and it also builds trust. It shows your integrity that you're on top of things, that you could be trusted, and that's what the first initial contact in a networking event does. It builds up trust and rapport between you and your potential clients. Number 15, learn to reciprocate. When I did a videography job, I charged a certain amount of flat rate. But in truth, I gave half of it back to that charity because I really loved what they do. I reinvested part of it back in again. Again, that shows that you're committed that shows that you're not just doing it for the money and that you're also hoping for a long-term relationship. It shows a lot on your part. Reciprocate. Get involved. Mesh with your potential that you just met. Number 16, find interest in others. Believe me, we humans, we love to talk about ourselves. But don't talk about yourself. Let the other person that you just met networking with let them talk about themselves. Ask them questions. What they do? How did they start? Why did they do it? Uh, what do they see the future going? What is the best part of what they do? And that gives you a chance to assess whether what product or service or even your speaking skills that you may do, whether you can offer it to them to help them. It gives you a chance to see what you can offer them. It gives you a chance to think. And also, it gives you an opportunity to see whether or not you can build up a good relationship with them, maybe even ask them to mentor you. 
And last but not least, number 17, practice, practice, practice. Always use opportunities in the social environment to practice your networking skills. And if you miss some of what I just said, don't forget to read the whole blog below. I kind of expand on a few of the points as well. Come back to my article every couple of months and reread it until you fully understand. Believe me, once you get your networking skills down pat, it will become so second nature, you will never have to think about doing it. It'll just come naturally to you. It'll just be there. You will be so smooth and polished. Practice, it's the best thing you could ever do. It's a soft skill, a life skill you cannot be without. That's all the tips for today. Good luck. If you have any questions, email me. And this is Terry with tips to make you a better you.